Breaking news tonight, exercise mom Missy Beaver stabbed dead with multiple puncture wounds to the head and chest inside the local church. The mom of three arrives around 4 a.m. to teach an aerobics class. Surveillance video actually catches her killer disguised in full SWAT gear. And after watching the video, police suggest the killer has an injured right foot. An unnamed male colleague has his trash sifted through, but why? Cops bring in advanced stingray equipment to capture the killer's cell phone data, but still no arrest. Who killed exercise mom, Missy Beavers? Good evening, I'm Missy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us. Fitness instructor Missy Beavers murdered in cold blood during early morning hours at Midlothian Texas Church. The suspect, captured on the grainy surveillance video, is still unidentified. Wow. Who killed Missy Beavers after eight years? Still no arrest. First of all, listen to this. First time surveillance captured uh, the suspect on video was about 10 minutes before 4 a.m. Miss Beavers arrived at about 4.16 in the parking lot and entered the church immediately. Uh, a few minutes later, um, she was inside the church, not realizing the intruder was already inside, and shortly thereafter, she was murdered inside of the church. Who is intent on committing a murder at 4 o'clock in the morning? Who lay in wait for exercise mom, Missy Beavers? This could not have been random. Joining me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now, but first to Scott Brooks, president publisher for the WaxahatchieSun.com. Scott, thank you for being with us. Bring us all up to date. For those that don't recall the murder of Missy Beavers, what happened? Well, early on a Monday morning, pouring down rain, Missy was set up as usual to do her routines, or her class in a parking lot of a, a local church on what is usually a busy uh, highway between Waxahachie and Midlothian. And uh, given that it was raining, she went inside to set up and that's when she was killed. That was on April 18, 2016. I was sure as the head of the local media company then uh, that Whoever did it would be caught within maybe hours or days, but here we are eight years later and still uh, completely unsolved. As far as I'm concerned, uh, it just continues to be a, a bit of a cluster of a mess in terms of solving this case. That's one way to put it. Over 3,000 tips have come in on Missy Beaver's murder. She leaves home in the early morning hours, still dark outside, and she sends out a group text telling everybody, hey, we're still exercising gladiator style this morning. Even though it's raining, we're moving our class indoors. And she goes in around 4.15 a.m. to set up. Who in the hay is out in the rain entering that church waiting for Missy Beavers? Listen. As you probably already know, this case, case weighs very heavily on us. Uh, our investigative team, our department, we know that the community is hurting as well. We're committed to identifying the person or persons responsible for Missy's death. We're not going to rest until we do so. Joining us now, in addition to Scott Brooks from the Waxahachie Sun, is Renee Jones. Renee is Missy's dear friend and co-worker. Renee, thank you for being with us. As the days pass and Missy's case is still unsolved. What goes through your mind? You're constantly trying to figure out who did it. Um, was the car involved? Um, are the resources that we have enough? Um, you look at the facts, and although the facts are there, the evidence is not. Uh, we know, like you said, we know what time she arrived. We know what time uh, the perpetrator was in the church. But what we don't know is who is this person? How did they arrive? Did the Ultima at the SWAFA have anything to do with it? And how did they get away without e even being seen? 
So many of the facts were out there in the first months following Missy's murder. For instance, we see the perpetrator, Renee. We know it had to be targeted. Who else would be in the Midlothian church at that time of the day dressed in this getup? Obviously not looking for anything to steal. Just wandering around, wandering around until, bam, they nearly collide with Missy Beavers and then stab her dead. Uh, it, it, it's so obvious to me, Renee, and we've looked at all the usual suspects, many of them ruled out. Who is this person, Renee? Do you believe it's a man or a woman? My gut kind of tells me it's a woman, um, and I, I tend to re rely on that a lot, but at the end of the day, it could be a man, you know? It, it's really tough. Joining us is forensics expert Joseph Scott Morgan, professor of forensics, Jacksonville State University, author of Blood Beneath My Feet on Amazon, and star of a hit series podcast, Body Bags, with Joe Scott Morgan. Joe Scott, you and I have poured over the evidence in this case. And when you look at the perp walking through the halls, okay, testing, I mean, he, she doesn't even know what they're there for, obviously, so they're clearly not coming in to steal anything. I mean, who singles out the Creekside Midlothian Church at 4 o'clock in the morning, for Pete's sake? I, I guarantee you what they're looking for is where is Missy Beaver's going to have her indoor class. That's what they're looking for. But the person is slew-footed. In other words, without deviation, the right foot goes outward with every step. We know the height. We know the approximate weight. We know that this type of murder is typically committed by a man. We know it's got to be somebody within that area or arranged by someone in that area. Joe Scott, what more can be done for Pete's sake? I can tell you this. The person that perpetrated this crime had an awareness of that environment so much to the point that they felt the need to cover their face. So they knew that they would be uh, in amongst cameras with video surveillance. Um, and here's another thing for me as a, as a former investigator, the idea of the timing. Uh, I don't know about you, um, you know, but you know, the idea of getting up at this time of day lies kind of outside the norm for most people um, and that you have to meet up there before she is arriving. So this requires quite a bit of planning. I think that that's rather obvious. And just to get this rig on that this person has, however they went about purchasing it, however they went about acquiring it, uh, is, is going to be time consuming as well. Did they do it out in the parking lot? Did they do it at home in the safety of their home so that they could just hop in the car and go? I think that those are big indicators here. The time of the day, even the weather outside suggests this was a targeted murder. Listen. Midlothian, Texas is having some severe weather. Not severe enough to prevent mother of three Missy Beaver's early morning fitness class as she posts on Facebook, if it's raining, we're still training. No excuses. You are gladiators. Missy informs students because of the rain, they will be training inside the church rather than the parking lot. To Scott Brooks joining us, President Publisher, Waxahachie Sun. Scott, she was in the peak. She was at the peak of her physical powers. When she says gladiator class, she meant it. Do you see those biceps on her? My point is she could fight back, Scott Brooks. Yes, there's no question about it. Missy was known uh, in our community for her gladiator work. In addition to being a mom and, and just a, a good person, she was a gladiator, as you just said, and took this stuff really serious. Scott Brooks, at the time, of course, at the time of a homicide, all the dirty laundry comes out. Just because there may have been marital issues does not mean the husband is guilty. As a matter of fact, her husband was, as I recall, on a gambling cruise with a group of his friends, kind of a trip they did every year, which makes me also think the killer knew the husband would be gone. 
Of course, maybe did he plan it? Did he hire a hitman? Yeah, anything's possible. But no evidence that of that has ever emerged, even though investigators have searched. Of course, they look. The husband, lover, boyfriend, ex is always the first suspect. He was not in town or even in state. So I'm just trying to figure out what your thoughts are on the marital problems because it opens up a whole Pandora's box. If, if Missy Beavers had a boyfriend, did the boyfriend's wife or girlfriend know? I mean, there's so many avenues to investigate, Scott. The rumors have been from the absurd to the just level of vicious. And uh, I, I, I don't know any of those to be true. I believe in what Brandon has shared these years and most recently, two months ago in a two-part series interview with me. Uh, he continues to reinforce, at least in my mind, that he has nothing to do with M- Missy's murder. And both he and his father, who was kind of dragged into this uh, as a possible suspect, his father was in San Diego at the time. So uh, the Beaver family- Yeah, I recall that with the blood on the shirt that was taken to the laundry and it turned out to be uh, Chihuahua blood or something like that. It was not human blood. Guys, you're right. The husband was on a fishing trip, a trip he took annually, which makes me wonder, was someone reading Missy Beaver's text to say a boyfriend, an alleged boyfriend? Because I don't want to go down the road of dragging her through the mud, but in a murder investigation, all's fair. So did someone read a text or an email from Missy saying my husband's going to be gone? Uh, I, I, I'm curious, and this is what we know. Back to you, Joe Scott Morgan. Hey, let me throw this to Tom Smith joining us, former NYPD detective, co-host of Gold Shields podcast, and you can find him at the Gold Shields show. This is what we've learned. Now, we all know how the FBI can determine a height and weight of a perp caught on video. They look at the perp, say standing in a doorway. Then they go to that doorway. They measure, let's just say, that fire extinguisher cabinet to your left. They go there and they measure where the perp, the height of that fire extinguisher, and they can determine the height of the perp standing beside it. See what I mean right there? That's just one example. It's fairly easy to do. It takes a minute. But we know the killer is between 5'2 and 5'8. They predominantly walk slew-footed with their toes pointed outward. Look, they're not there to steal anything. Watch the gate. Watch this perp. Man or woman? Don't know. So, Tom Smith, you've watched this over and over and over. What do you think? My initial thought was that it was a male. And then the more I looked at it, the more I looked at certain traits that were going on in the video, I am comfortable thinking it's a female because of just the walk. And the one thing that really stood out to me was in one particular part of the video, she uses the hammer to break a window. Now, not that females can wield a hammer like a male, but just the way she hit one of the windows did it for me that it was a female. Just the kind of the way she did it is what triggered it for me. You mean Uh, like uh, you throw a ball like a girl? Is that what you're trying to say? Go ahead. Put it out there. I don't care. Something like that. You know, and it's nothing against anybody, but just an observation of the way, you know, she hit one of the windows. I got another phone call from the scene from a a female Midlothian officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said that Missy's no longer with us. And I didn't know... Um, did you did it register that she meant like Missy had died or was yeah, killed? It, or it, 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 that's actually, what registered? it absolutely registered. The suspect was seen wearing police SWAT tactical gear, including a black helmet and a vest with the word police across the front. You are seeing just like authorities did. And, and, and I agree with Tom Smith, former NYPD. The whole looking in windows and pulling up cabinets, that was all for show. The perp just waiting 
for Missy Beavers to walk in. And earlier, you saw Scott Brooks interviewing Missy's husband. Um, again, he was way out of state at the time Missy was murdered. And unless there's some intricate hitman plot that has never been able to be deciphered, he didn't do it. So where does it leave us? Yeah, everybody would find it really easy to pin it on the husband. Not this time. Shocker, it's not always the husband. Now, this is what we know. According to a search warrant that was actually released by LE Law Enforcement uh, in Midlothian, we now know Missy Beavers was allegedly having marital and financial struggles at the time of her death and believed to be in an intimate relationship external to the marriage. That's what the documents say. Dr. Bethany Marshall joining us, a renowned psychoanalyst, joining us out of L.A. Her new book, Deal Breaker, when to work on a relationship and when to walk away. Dr. Bethany, thank you for being with us. How many times have I heard a defense attorney say, every adulterer is not a killer, but I can tell you this, Dr. Bethany, reverse that. Think about it. Flip it. When you have a, a murder that is in the middle of an affair, I find it really hard to believe that the killer is not somehow in that mix. And I'm not saying the husband. Okay, I've put him away. He's on the shelf. He's not a suspect in my mind right now. I can revisit him later because he's out of state. To this day, nothing has been uncovered regarding a plot that he arranged the murder. Okay, so step back, think. Who else in that affair circle, a wife, a girlfriend, an ex? Help me think, Dr. Bethany, the dynamic here. Let's go back to the perp for a second. Man or woman, we know that this person has a mix of masculine and feminine traits. So that narrows the pool just a little bit right there. The person is wearing tactical gear, which suggests that the perp gravitates towards positions of power. And we know that people who are sociopathic love, love, they, they love power. So that narrows the pool just a little bit too. And then we extend it out to this, this possible affair. It, it does sort of help us to cast a wider net around people who might have been preoccupied with Missy. Um, if she was having an affair with a man, the man's girlfriend, the man's wife, um, a jealous coworker, love triangles are at the heart of homicides very, very often. We also know that the perp was probably not somebody who attended her fitness class because if, if he was, uh, he or she was um, limping or pronating to the right, um, and the, the, the perp looks kind of overweight, unless this is very puffy tactical gear. This is not somebody who looks very fit. So it takes it away from the fitness world, somebody who could have developed a preoccupation with her, somebody who was in her class, and it puts into the world of intimate relationships because Nancy, it's in the context of intimate relationships that homicides occur most often. I'm not talking about the husband, but think about it. It's only in our most intimate relationships that we feel despair, rage, betrayal, anger. So this person, I think, was linked in some way emotionally to Missy or emotionally to the affair person. Okay, wait a minute. Are you trying to sell me on the idea that it was one of the women in her class? No. And not I'm connected saying, to the love triangle? No, I said the opposite. It's not somebody in her class because this person does not look fit. They do not look like somebody who could be in a gladiator How can you tell class. that? They're, they're garbed and, you know, they might as well be wearing a burqa. <laughs> I can't tell anything in that. We don't even know if it's a man or a woman. What is that? I, I don't know, Nancy. This person just doesn't look like a paragon of, of health. I, I, I can't even tell you why. And I do think it's useful. Okay, wait a minute. There's... You know, Bethany, I respected you up until you said that because you're, ask, you're telling me you don't think it's somebody in their exercise class because somebody that's totally swathed in a SWAT outfit, you can tell they're not fit. You think everybody in an exercise person. class is fit? I can guarantee <laughs> I you that's not true.
Hey, Nancy, did you see pictures of Missy doing the lunges with the kettlebell? I mean, this woman was fit. Amazing. Was fit. This person I know her. I'm talking about the not... You know what? Hold on. I... Hold on. I, I, okay. I, I did not expect your answer to be that what I'm hearing. Renee Jones joining me. This is Missy Beaver's friend and co-worker. Were you familiar with her exercise class? Absolutely, I was. Absolutely, I was. And to be quite honest, Nancy, our, our training um, guidelines were to train to the masses. Our ultimate goal, even personally, was to impact as many lives as possible in as many places as possible. I find it really hard to believe, Renee, that anyone in her exercise class that she was teaching, her gladiator class is, you know, a better way to put it, killed her. I mean, there may have been some jealousy or some resentment of some sort. I, I don't see it. I always looked up to my uh, fitness instructors, but I don't see that at all. I don't think that's the right direction. I have, I have to agree um, simply because the environment and the culture that's created and was created in, the, in those camps was one of family oriented. It was one of change. It was one of faith. Much has been made of the fact that Missy advertised the date, time, and location of her class online. Now, you would think that that could attract hundreds of crazy pervs. But remember, we're talking about Midlothian, Texas, with a very, very small population. Very, very rural. So who was looking at Missy Beaver's posting? Who knew? she would be inside that day, as opposed to all other days when she held her class outside. Was some wa someone waiting for the moment? Joining me in all-star panel, I'm gonna go to Joe Scott Morgan, joining us, Professor of Forensics, Jacksonville State University, with an incredible criminal procedure and uh, forensic program. Joe Scott, let's talk about the mode of murder. Okay. Multiple yeah. puncture wounds to the face, the head, and the chest. Now, as much as it seems to me, someone 5'2", potentially to 5'8", with that gait, with the manner of breaking the glass that Tom Smith, NYPD detective, described, I think it would be a woman, but the mode of murder, stabbing her in the face and the chest, is more of a male, a typical male attack. This is an attempt, I think at least, to uh, greatly damage and disfigure her, Nancy. Uh, do you realize, in, we're saying stab, but these are punctures, which is completely different type of insult. Uh, when you're talking about a puncture wound, uh, imagine somebody being driven through with a piece of rebar or a pole or something like that. And that's what we're dealing with. This instrument that they're talking about here, this hammer as it's been framed is quite interesting because you can, you can have puncture wounds that are created by a claw hammer. If you use the, the claw end, it could also be a geology hammer, which has actually a, a spike on one end of it and a, a normal hammer on the other side. But, these are outliers, Nancy, in our field. When you talk about death by hammer, uh, we hear a lot about these over the years, but they don't happen with great frequency. And what's fascinating about this is that this person goes to all the trouble to dress up as a cop, to maybe present themselves as a police officer, but they don't show up with a firearm, Nancy. They show up with a hammer to use for a lethal instrument. Why, why that? That's very, very intimate, Nancy. This, is, this ranks right up there with stab wounds and other bludgeoning types of deaths. Very up close and personal. To Scott Brooks joining us from the Waxahachie Sun. Scott, what is the theory regarding the murder weapon? Well, I will tell you this, and I've never really said this before publicly, but uh, I would, given the sources that, that we have, and they're confidential, uh, I would bet my mortgage that Missy was killed with a screwdriver. And that uh, while the medical examiner says puncture wounds, we do see the perpetrator 
walking around with a hammer. We can't tell what's on both sides of that hammer. Uh, but what I, I can strongly confirm is that M Missy was killed with a, a screwdriver. And I don't know if you want to be any more vivid than that, but um, that that was, that was the wound and that was the, the method of, of murder. And okay, the, Scott Brooks, why are you saying screwdriver versus hammer? Because uh, of the sources that we have that saw Missy's body uh, within hours after her death. Joining us now, special guest, Dr. Michael Nirenberg, podiatrist, physician, and surgeon, forensic podiatrist, who was called in on this investigation. Dr. Nirenberg, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you, Nancy, for having me. How did you get involved in the Missy Beavers murder investigation? I think it was uh, uh, someone from the Midlothian uh, Police Department. And, and uh, after that, I ended up uh, conversing mostly with uh, an FBI agent or several FBI agents on the case. What happened, Dr. Nirenberg? So um, I was called in to look at the, the gate of the uh, perpetrator and a gate is, is how we, we walk or move in simple terms. And uh, the manner and our style of walking between people generally varies. Um, so while two people can walk the same, um, most people tend to walk a little differently and have different mannerisms and features of their gait uh, some people will swing their arms a lot, for example. Some people just let their arms dangle. So I was asked to uh, compare the, evaluate and compare the, the gate of the perpetrator uh, within the church with that of persons that uh, the FBI sent me video of. And uh, they would just send me men, women. They would just send me uh, persons, and they didn't tell me if they were persons of interest, if they were, uh, you know, like a police lineup, if they were uh, just police officers, and they had me uh, let them know if they walked the same uh, similar or they walked different. Missy Beavers arrives at Creekside Church at 4.16 a.m. and begins setting up for her 5 a.m. fitness class. She doesn't realize there is someone else in the building. Video surveillance inside Creekside Church shows a person dressed in full police SWAT tactical gear, walking through the halls of the church with an unusual gait while clutching a hammer. The unknown person uses force to get into the church when he is first seen on video about 3.50 a.m. Fitness instructor Missy Beavers murdered in cold blood during early morning hours at Midlothian Texas Church. The suspect, captured on the grainy surveillance video, is still unidentified. Joining a special guest, Dr. Michael Nirenberg. Uh, Dr. Nirenberg was brought in by police to assist with the FBI investigation. The FBI showed Dr. Nirenberg video that has not been released to the public, and it is very, very disturbing. In fact, it shows Missy inside the church. Dr. Nirenberg, what does the video you saw depict? All the video was sent to me as far as I know, and there was video of Missy arriving at the church, setting up in the church. But, but the most emotional, disturbing part for me was where she stops doing what she's doing. She walks into another hallway, and you can see her sort of like cock her head a little bit, almost like she hears something and she's sort of looking like, what does she hear? She hears something. There's something that stops her cold. And it's almost like, and, and, I, and I'm sure, I'm sure you, people can relate to when you're watching those horror films and you're, you want to yell at the screen, you know, get out of the house um, because sadly we, we know what's coming. You know, Tom Smith joining me, former NYPD detective and host of Gold Shields podcast. We spend so much time talking about the evidence and the facts and the clues. But do you hear what Dr. Michael Nirenberg is saying? 
that there is additional video that he has seen that shows Missy inside the church preparing for the class. And you see her look like she hears something, and she does. She's hearing her killer. We very rarely think about what she went through in the moments leading up to her murder. Yeah, it's disturbing, uh, and it's sad. But that goes to the setup, like I was talking about before. You know, everything's laid out to show or to give the appearance of a break-in. And maybe the perpetrator made a sound to get her attention to come in that direction and then did what they had planned to do the whole time. Back to Dr. Michael Nuremberg joining us, uh, physician and surgeon, forensic podiatrist that was brought in on the Missy Beavers murder investigation. Dr. Nuremberg, you're telling me that the additional video that has not been released to the public shows Missy in the church preparing for her class. What room is she in? I do recall is where she walks out into the hall and she starts walking down the hall and she stops and you can see her like looking, listening. Um, you know she hears something. And, and you know, a, as a forensic scientist, what we do is very dry and it just brings it home at the end of the day that, 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 that these crimes are about, you know, people and, and what they experience and, and uh, what your prior guest said. Uh, I actually took it the other way that, that maybe, I've often thought that maybe the perpetrator may, was making noise because they did not think anybody else was in the church that was my, not as a forensic podiatrist, but just as a person thinking about the case over the years, I actually thought the reverse, that, that he, was make, he or she was making noise because they just didn't think anybody was there, and somehow they got surprised by her finding them, perhaps. Curious. Is it true the FBI asked you to study the video of the suspect, and you actually had an officer reenact what happened with and without the SWAT suit or the body armor. What, right. So what, what I did when I first got the case is I went to my local uh, police station. Uh, I'm out here in Northwest Indiana in a small town. And I went to the police station and I had a, uh, the, they, they agreed to help. And um, they, uh, the police officer who trains with SWAT gear once a month, he, uh, I videotaped him w and took photos of him walking with and without the, the police gear. And um, so, so I, and, and I actually put the gear on myself at one point just to feel the weight of it. Um, and it was, it was somewhat heavy. I, I forget the exact weight of this gear, but I think it was about 40 pounds. And I remember that 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 the photos of him with and without it actually showed him him shorter with with the uh, with the gear um, when he was wearing the gear it actually shortened his height. Question: I, I call it slew footed. Some people call it duck footed. How many? What percentage of our population is slew footed? Well, there. Well, and and what I call it is is out towing. Um, so when you're looking at out tow amount of the population, there's varying degrees of out towed, uh, out towing. And what's interesting here is when we look at gates, some people uh, only out tow when their feet are land on the ground. Um, some people out tow as their foot swings through the air. Um, suggesting uh, 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 that the, the whole leg and knee are, are turned outward through the swing. And if, if you look here, through the swing, um, not just when the feet are on the ground, uh, there, there's out towing um, to, a, to a significant uh, degree. You know, usually you see in, in most of the population, we, we're out towed about maybe 10 degrees approximately or so. So here you're seeing significant um, out towing and not just when their feet are st on the ground, but when they swing that leg forward, you know, you look at the knee, you, you look at the, 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 the arms, the head is hanging slightly 
tilted, the head is slightly forward, not directly back over the shoulders. One knee is stays pretty much bent to a small degree. It doesn't completely straighten. The other, the other knee right. remains straighter. Got a question for you, Dr. Nirenberg. Isn't it true that as you say out towing, as I say slew footed, typically manifests when someone is younger, like a toddler up to adolescent, you don't develop that gait later in life, do you? That's a great question, Nancy. And um, most people uh, are out towed due to, like you said, genetics, heredity, but, but other things can happen. You can have a, you can develop arthritis, you can have an injury to your knee, your hip, your back. Um, so, so the majority of slew footed individuals have it as a youth, a toddler to teen years. It develops somewhere in that time. Is that correct? The majority. Um, I, I would, I would say without researching it as, as a, as a estimate in my experience, the majority of people it's when they're young, this develops and then it stays with them. Okay, so got it. So my point is, doctor, to just bring it home, is that whoever this is likely has walked like this since they were a toddler, and therefore people around them know they walk like this. I can spot my husband's gait a mile away. I don't have to see his face. I know it's him. Same with my son, same with my daughter, by the way she holds her arms when she walks. You know this person, but no one is coming forward. This is someone in Missy's circle, someone that is connected to her or someone she's involved with who killed Missy. Who killed Missy Beavers? To Scott Brooks joining us, president, publisher, Waxahachie Sun, does it just burn you up? Does it bother you that somebody has to know who this perp is? Someone that is connected to Missy Beavers, to her exercise class? No, not that. No. It's someone more connected to her. This is not a robbery gone wrong. Typically, when burglars are found out, they run. They leave. They don't grab a screwdriver and murder the witness. Plus, this perp was completely swathed. There's no way she would have recognized them. Aren't they wearing like a motorcycle helmet? Yes, and to answer your, your first question, it, it, for eight years I have been, I wouldn't say obsessed, but I've certainly made a commitment to Missy's family, her girls, her ex-husband, her former husband, that uh, we weren't going to stop as a media company making sure that we kept this thing alive, so to speak, and uh, that we have somebody in our community, in my opinion, on the loose, free, who did this heinous thing uh, is just... Yeah, hey, hey, back it up, Scott Brooks. You said somebody in the community. I agree with you. I do not think that this was a hired hit from, you know... You didn't have the scorpion come in from uh, Columbia to kill Missy Beavers. Someone right, in this community, in this region, did this thing. And for all these years, Dr. Bethany Marshall, they have sat back and enjoyed watching us try and figure it out. And by God, somehow we've got to get this killer, Bethany. How happy mm -hmm. do you think they are watching us try to catch them? Nancy, every time this crime gets covered, they get to live and relive the excitement of the crime. This person enjoyed this. As Joe Scott Morgan said, this was a very intimate, intimate attack. It was full of rage. It was full of passion. So this person is, is hiding in plain sight, probably looks sort of passive and slick and sort of harmless to the community, but the community needs to take a good look around and see, you know, if there's a family member or somebody that they know 
who's preoccupied with the crime, because that could be a big clue if somebody keeps collecting data and watching and rewatching shows and interviews. That suggests that they're yeah, still yeah. relishing Dr. in the Dr. Bethany, act. you know what? And anybody on the panel jump in. If you watch this person, I, I don't know if you can play it back, but when they pause, they're not making a real effort to get any of these into any of these doors that are locked. They're like, eh, 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 on the on the handle and they move on. But at one point they pause and, okay, watch, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No, keep going. Watch the stance, the stance, okay. They turn and they're gonna, that's a woman. Look, keep, keep looking. There's one point where the perp practically puts her hand on her hips. Wait for it. Wait for it. Watch, Dr. Bethany. We're getting there very slowly. Right there. I see Doesn't it. Doesn't that look like a woman? I can see I it, I can practically yes. see her bikini bod. I can, too. Yeah, you have a really good point. But also a woman who has masculine traits. So as I said earlier, that that can narrow the pool somewhat. Maybe somebody who's non-binary, maybe somebody who identifies it's as a woman but dresses as a man. giving me a headache. Dr. Nirenberg, Scott Brooks, uh, Joe Scott, Tom Smith, Dr. Bethany, we have lived this case and it is burning me up that we have all this knowledge, but we still don't have an answer for anyone that knows or thinks that they know any information regarding the brutal murder, the puncture murder of Missy Beavers, I ask you to please dial the Midlothian PD, 972-775-7624. Repeat, 972-775-7624. And trust me, it is never wrong to do the right thing. There is a $150,000 reward. And it's never too late to do the right thing. We stop and remember American hero, police officer Jake Wallen, just 23. Officer Wallen dies in the line of duty, Fargo, North Dakota. Minnesota National Guard, Officer Wallen was deployed in Afghanistan and Iraq, survived by grieving fiance Winter, mother and father Jeff and Amy, brother Brady, American hero, Officer Jake Wallen. Thank you to all of our guests for joining us and, and lending us their, their expertise and their knowledge, but especially to you for joining us, our new friends at MSM and everyone as we pull together to find answers. Nancy Grace signing off. I'll see you tomorrow night, 6 to 9 o'clock sharp Eastern. And until then, good night, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on YouTube. To get the very latest, subscribe to Crime Online here.